Welcome to the New Strength Way, a podcast made for empowering people to become their strongest selves through movement, education, and connection. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the New Strength Way podcast. Today, Nathan and I are going to be answering a listener question, one from our only listener, I'm pretty sure. Uh, <laughs> but we got asked, basically, what are our thoughts on intermittent fasting? Do we recommend it for people? And just a general overview. So. Uh, for those that don't know what intermittent fasting is, Nate, do you want to give them a rundown loosely on yeah. the term? Um, it's pretty much when you restrict your eating times in a condensed period. So the, the timing is different depending on who you ask and what they want to do, but it doesn't have to be super rigid. It's just in this period of time I'm eating and this period of time I'm fasting. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty much it. So fasting is generally considered as you're not taking in any calories um so you're still having water and potentially calorie free drinks or black coffee and things like that yeah. uh, and then on your eating windows when you consume your caloric intake for the day and it might be through two hours four hours six hours depending on who the person is or what they're following and um potentially like a single day fast uh just yeah yeah you can do around. five two yeah. is which is like a i guess a calorie fast you'd say yeah um but yeah it's generally like Generally speaking, intermittent fasting is just having periods of time when you're purposely not eating and periods of time when you are eating. Yeah. And so, like, the general consensus of intermittent fasting, when you look into what a lot of people project on it that are into it, is that there's like, better insulin sensitivity, uh, more positive adaptations to hormones, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. But really, I think what we find it comes down to for most people in terms of, like, from a fat loss perspective is they don't have enough time to eat too much food. But yeah, definitely. And I um, I can't remember who exactly it was, but they were talking about some recent research and they found a lot of the things people were finding, like the positive adaptations hormonally and stuff was purely just from being in a deficit. Yeah. So when people were in a caloric deficit of the same amount and didn't fast, then those other markers they spoke about were about the same. Yeah. But I'll have to figure out what that was before I talk about it more. Yeah. I think that was also somebody who mentioned basically like, uh, who was it? I think it was Joel Jameson on a, po on a podcast was talking about the idea of that the the fasting, the energy release, and the boost that people get is basically to stop you from dying. Yeah, um, it's like hormone hormonal response. You do like, and I've done fasting heaps, really. Like I've used it a lot, and I think it's just a tool, yeah. a tool in your tool belt, and um, you you have periods of time when you know you can use it. I think the best thing that it's done for anyone that has done it is just make them a little bit more, I guess give them a little bit more freedom with their eating. Yeah. Like where it used to be, for most people, super consistent meals and there's nothing wrong with that, but you, coming back to that minimal effective dose, if you do miss a meal, it's not the end of the world, you can just catch it up later. Yeah. I think it makes the uh, process a little easier. So where would you possibly recommend it for somebody that's come into the gym, uh, maybe they they've being curious about trying it, where would you recommend it for them or how would you recommend them to do that? Um, just look at their situation first. It's generally their success you can already see generally by their personality and their situation. Uh, works quite well for busy people I've found. Yeah. Because um, they're, when they're on the go and they're doing a lot, it's easy not to eat. So if you can make it somewhat structured and say, okay, from this period of time to this period of time, you're not consuming calories and then in this period of time you are. Um, that can be successful, but it just depends what, what the person thinks they're going to get from it too. Yeah. Like if someone comes in and thinks it's going to be this amazing thing that's going to give them everything they ever wanted, I think you just need to get clear and educate them around the fact that it's it's not overly special. It's just going to help you main, like maintain a caloric, I guess, deficit for most people uh, in an easier way. So I think it's more around like the psychology of the person and their situation, what will work best. Um, but... It's very individualized. Hey, I wouldn't recommend it for too many people. Maybe people that overeat throughout the day and yeah. find themselves snacking on lots of things. It really depends on the person. I um, think you could nearly blanket statement for muscle loss, uh, for muscle gain. It's probably not the best idea. Yeah, for uh, or for like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, for muscle gain or for strength gain. Like, I think there there's a little bit of evidence of like having consistent protein. Uh, meals throughout the day is better for maximizing muscle growth. Yeah, it's definitely a, a fat loss. Yeah. Most of the time, a fat loss tool. And um, you wouldn't, 
Not to say you couldn't, but you wouldn't. I wouldn't go out of my way to try and do it if I was trying to gain size or put on weight. Yeah, I'm. I'm yet to see somebody who's super strong. Uh, there's very except a lot of exceptions to it, like that come up here and there anecdotally, but I'm yet to see consistently that it's like these guys do intermittent fasting and they get strong real quick. Mm. Uh, yeah. Tends but, to be the other way around. Yeah, it's more. I think it's more of a lifestyle thing. It's not performance. I think if you're trying to do it for performance, you're looking down the wrong rabbit hole, so to say. Yeah. Like yeah. it's not. It's not a performance tool. I think it's more of a lifestyle tool. If someone wants to lose weight or have a healthier, a healthier relationship with food, where they're not as reliant on it, or maybe they don't. They through that period of time when they do eat. I don't know, I, it really depends on the person. Hey, but it's not. Long story short, it's nothing special. If I was trying to perform at my best, I wouldn't do it. So I wouldn't recommend for people to do it. And just be careful on what who you're getting your information off to. Like there's people that are diehard intermittent fasters that claim a lot of things that just aren't true. Like um, um, what was the uh, Ashley Bynes thing on a keto challenge? Uh, <laughs> something along the line. Know. It was. I'm I remember sure was looking at it, and it was uh, it was absolutely classic when. It basically said it was like keto diets work by shutting down your body's Krebs cycle, but ketones actually go through the Krebs cycle, so that's a complete lie. <laughs> uh, I think oh, <laughs> that could I, take uh, us down a rabbit hole, but oh, just new like nutrition in the fitness industry is just a joke. Pretty From much, if you want any say, nutrition information legitimately, read Precision Nutrition's website. Yeah, They're probably the most like. Clear, we, can like, link, we can link that in, yeah. the, in the show notes. Clear cut, like they will take it from the middle ground and go, here's where it can work, here's where it can't. I think that's where I, most of the time where I'll get a lot of my information if I'm unsure on something, I read what they've written about it because they do it without any sort of bias or need to go down either route. Mm, definitely. Um, anyway, I think we can wrap it up. Intermittent fasting's not anything special. It can be a good fat loss tool if it suits the person. But um, if you're focusing on performance or you think it's going to give you some special thing, most likely it's not. All it's going to do is help you contain your calories. Personally speaking, every time I've used it, it's purely to condense my caloric intake into a period so I can feel like I'm eating more food when I'm dieting. So if I'm busy throughout the day and I have 3,000 calories to eat in between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m., it's enjoyable. Yeah. And so for me, it's purely that was just psych- it's just psychological. Like, it's just, I enjoy eating lots of food at the end of the day. And if I ate lots of calories, if I, say, wasn't tracking my calories and I was at 2,000 calories throughout the day purely just from having normal meals, and then I had 3,000 calories in between that window, then I wouldn't be getting any results. And if I started intermittent fasting, I'd soon get results. And I'd just assume it's the fasting. Yeah. But it's not the fasting, it's the bigger picture. And most dieting is just the bigger picture. It's not the diet itself. For sure. Cool. So that'll wrap us up for today, guys. We'll see you next week.